Radical. Well, the Jazz season has come to an end, and the LA Clippers have made their first Conference Finals appearance in franchise history. Let me tell you what's impressive about this. Uh, I only saw the last quarter of this game. I didn't see the beginning of the game. What's impressive about this is you have the LA Clippers, who have been written off multiple times, have another stellar comeback. First, they had a comeback against the Mavericks. You know, we were making jokes about them against the Mavericks. And now here they are, beating the Utah Jazz, the number one seeded Utah Jazz in only six games. And I see that man, Paul George, right there. You know, Donovan Mitchell congratulating Paul George. Playoff P. Now and forever, we will call this man Playoff P. You know, unless, I don't want to jinx him, unless, like, he just kind of, like, craps the bed in the Western Conference Finals. Now, they're taking on the Suns, but uh, Chris Paul is in protocol. I don't know when he's going to come back. And Kawhi Leonard, you know, his knee is messed up, so I'm not sure when he's going to come back. So those are two players that we may not see for the early part of that series, but it'll still be a good series. It will be. Because you got Devin Booker. You got a lot of other great players on the Suns. I'm really excited for this series. And... You know, I've been proven wrong here. Just a couple weeks ago, I was making fun of the L.A. Flippers. But here they are. Here they are. Patrick Beverly. That's what surprised me at the end. Pat Bev hit two dagger threes. I'll repeat that. Patrick freaking Beverly. I mean, he wasn't even playing in some of the games. I, I think, I, I don't know what it is about this Clippers team. They are incredibly scrappy. Now they're talking to Paul George, you know, playoff P, pandemic P, whatever you want to call him. You know, he's going to need a new nickname. If he gets to the actual finals, if they can beat the Suns, you know, and take on the Nets or Milwaukee. On the other side, on the Eastern Conference, I didn't see the game, but I followed the uh, score. I literally, you know, I wasn't able to. I wish I could have saw that game. It was really close towards the end. I think Ben Simmons got six points. He had six points. I was reading the ticker and everything like that. So on the Eastern side, uh, if Philly does not beat the Hawks, you know, the system, the process, they're going to have to blow up the process, I would say. So, yeah, I'm really excited to see the next upcoming series between the Suns and the Clippers. I don't know how long they're going to be without Kawhi Leonard, but what helps them is Chris Paul's in the COVID protocol. Kind of weird, though, how Chris Paul is in the protocol, yet they let LeBron James play. Isn't that kind of weird? You know, did anybody notice that? LeBron James went to a party, broke protocol, but they let him play, but they can't let Chris Paul play. Hey, this is this is the year for the Clippers, right? They got to they gotta grab this one. They got to grab this one by the cojones and take this. This is probably their only real shot, I will say, with the way things are shaking out. You know, with the Nets not having Kyrie with the Suns, they got Chris Paul in the protocol. You know, this is their opportunity. One last note here. The LA Clippers actually made history. They made NBA history by being the only team that has ever come back in the playoffs down in two series, 0-2. They lost their first two games against the Mavs, came back, beat the Mavs. And they lost their first two games against the Jazz, came back and beat the Jazz. So we might be uh, calling Paul George Playoff P. We might actually start having to call him Playoff P and mean it. But I think we can safely call this team the Comeback Clippers. You heard it here first.